So I fell for the trap of dealership oil changes and services at a regular interval. Well, that didn't quite work out for me the way I would like. Certainly the dealership changed the oil, but you never know who they really have changing the oil there. And my guess is that it's not a trained technician or necessarily someone that's even that competent. I'm going to show you a few surprises that I ran into getting my uh, oil changed at the dealership. And when I went to change it for the first time myself, um, some of the things I found. Some of those things are some unpleasant surprises. And then with changing it my first time, uh, in my tundra, I also found that there were some pleasant surprises, some things that maybe I thought were going to be difficult from what I had read or seen in other videos, and there are better videos out there for doing your oil changes, but some things that I found to be pretty convenient and simple and not all that difficult. So we're going to review some of those things here now. So uh, today I'm changing the oil and air filter uh, in my uh, 2018 Toyota Tundra. Uh, four-wheel drive platinum um, just for purposes of labeling what I'm working on. First thing I want to show you with this is I've always had this vehicle serviced at the dealership. It's not a dealership that I love here locally. Um, as a matter of fact, I would say quite the opposite. Um, I only take my truck in there if I have to and because of the free services that's where it went largely um, and uh, now I'm going to start doing this stuff on my own. The uh, If you look here, I'm showing you these are the bolts that Hold the uh, skid plate on over there. As you can see, my skid plate pretty dirty because um, uh, I go a lot of dirty places and one in dusty places. But one of the things is there are four bolts here. There are supposed to be five. This vehicle has only been serviced at the dealership. Um, that's why it's not going back. <laughs> it just you never know who's doing this stuff at the dealership. It always makes me nervous. Um, and quite honestly, it wasn't the most convenient dealership in the world. I had to call them more than a week and a half in advance uh, to get that. And I'm not going to name them because I don't believe in doing that sort of stuff unless they did something really atrocious. It's just a standard of who they are. But what I am replacing today is my air filter. And this was uh, whatever they had replaced or stock air filter. I'm not certain, but it had been doing fine. You can see it's fairly dirty. And like I said, I've... I've had this truck out in the desert a few times on some long trips. I've done some off-roading in it. Um, I've had it covered in dust, and I'm sure this air filter, which actually looks pretty darn good and surprisingly good, um, uh, is just not uh, doing quite what I would like it to do. So I'm switching it out to this rather expensive uh, K&N, and it is the SA5017. It's 50 bucks, but uh, a <clears throat> couple things about it. Um, uh, one is it's reusable um, <clears throat> and it's every 50,000 miles um, that you need to clean it as you can see there um, you go 50,000 miles and then you just clean it and put it back in um, I'm liking that concept although I will probably just replace it if after 50,000 miles which for me will be in about two years um, high quality air filter and that's what we want to go ahead and put back in there um, as I do use my truck a lot, I, <clears throat> I use, I'm using Mobile One Full Synthetic and uh, uh, Fram Air Filter uh, combined with this K&N and uh, hopefully that keeps the performance going very well. The K&N comes with instructions for when you clean it. Here you can see uh, step one, remove the filter. Step two, apply cleaner. Don't let it dry on there. Rinse the filter with regular water and then dry it and reinstall it. Pretty straightforward and simple. So who knows, maybe I will do that um, 50,000 miles uh, if it looks like it needs it. This one uh, is currently at about 76,000 because I used up the, uh, the dealer oil changes and then was changing it about every 10,000 there. Uh, but now I think I'm going to start doing this on my own and probably doing it a little bit more uh, frequently just because of the amount I tow and uh, uh, the amount I go to some uh, fairly desolate places with fairly dusty roads. You know, one of the first things I will say about changing this air filter, um, previously I had had a Ram uh, 1500 Limited and I really liked my Ram. My Ram was a great truck. I had it for 120,000 miles. I had a 2012, one of the first Limiteds ever made. Uh, before I got this 2018 Tundra, which I love even more, um, and obviously has been pretty much a problem-free vehicle. When I say pretty much, I mean there really haven't been any problems, but the ease of the clips for the air filter are great. 
It makes it very simple to uninstall and reinstall this thing. It's actually less work than when a RAM was. I had to unbolt things. I had to disconnect the hose here to get enough room to do the air filter in the RAM. So one of the things I like that the Toyota made real convenient. One of the things I'm less enthused about is that I have to take off the skid plate um, and uh, probably going to clean that guy up. It's got a fair amount of grime on it. And uh, looks like uh, uh, some areas where they were changing at the dealership as I clean that off because I don't have any leaks anywhere. I don't have any, uh, I don't have any uh, cam tower leaks or anything like that. I looked all over. Um, everything looks really good inside. And yet another surprise on the skid plate. See the way that hook's aimed up there? How it sticks straight up? Well, that one right here is supposed to be sticking straight up as well, and it's not. It's bent over, which means somebody hammered it in or screwed it down. Again, kind of really disappointing um, in terms of how this was uh, treated um, at the dealership. Um, a lot of reasons to not take your Toyota Tundra to the dealership, especially if it happens to be the dealership by me. And again, I don't want to name names because I don't know what exactly went on there, but I know that isn't right. So there are lots of videos out there on the Tundra and how to change your oil and uh, about cam leaks. And if you look here, why well, I don't have cam leak anywhere. You can see there's nothing leaking in there. And when I looked at my uh, uh, skid plate here, that's one of the, my other dislikes is that it was really full of some oily grime, which means the oil changes that were done on this were really done sloppily and allowed stuff to drip down uh, onto the pan here. Um, which is not a huge deal. I mean, let's face it, it's going to get dirt and grime there anyway, but it just speaks to the overall quality. So I'm going to get that cleaned up a little bit before I put it back on. Of course, it's going to get dirty again, um, especially with the way I use it, but um, it is what it is. And, and so it just tells me about uh, the quality of what they were doing uh, at the dealership. You can see I've got some red dust caked out up and around uh, uh, the stem for my oil fill there that's uh from recent trip to moab and that's the sort of stuff that you know when i take care of it i'm gonna get all that cleaned up and wiped down um and so from now on uh this is just it's going to be up to me and i'm not leaving this up to the dealership now one of the frequent complaints about the tundra is right here uh, with this housing uh, for the oil filter I'm gonna tell you, it does kind of stink, but I'll also tell you, it's way better than what was in my Ram 1500, where I had to reach up and around and get hot oil on my arm every time I did it down, you know, my glove and my arm as I changed it. Um, this actually makes that quite a bit easier here. And before you take this uh, cap off of here, why it's just a uh, simple 3 8 drive right here uh, to go ahead and remove that, nothing too complicated. Now a nice little trick here is that I bought the Fram XG10295 and I'm not sure if this comes with all Fram uh, oil filters. You can see it's a 20,000 mile oil filter which means I'll probably just change this one with every other uh, change. But if we look, it actually it comes with this little plastic piece right here and I just happen to have some extra plastic tubing. This is 3 8 inside diameter and a half inch outside diameter plastic tubing. So you can buy this piece as part of a kit or you can just, you know, do what I did, go to Walmart, get this wrench for uh, six bucks and this little plastic piece comes with the filter and then I get a better quality filter and uh, this will go ahead and uh, uh, drain that filter housing for us um, while we um, wait to do that and put everything back together and put the new oil in. So I know they sell expensive little kits uh, to drain this uh, filter housing but as you can see there, I actually found this to work better without the tubing. I just set my uh, drip pan right underneath it and uh, once I set that oil catch pan right underneath uh, the housing here, I'm just letting it drain out. It drains straight into it. It was no more difficult than draining the oil itself. And then we'll take this housing off and uh, change out our filter here. So really pleased with uh, kind of a nice surprise that that uh, uh, Fram kit came with that little plastic housing. I don't know if others do or don't, they might. But what I will tell you is that that was something that uh, makes this job a lot easier versus having to deal with uh, messy oil dripping out of that housing.